so welcome and uh, we can start about the introduction of LDB. This is more comparison with the more common GDB debugger uh, being used for C and C++ in Fedora. Uh, so there should be some motivation why to use LDB because G one gets used to GDB so why any change. So first is that if you type some print command then most of the C++ expressions fail if you want to call some iterate some uh, iterators and examine some containers of C++, it will fail in GDB while, while LDB handles it fine because it is using the CLang compiler to compile the expression as if it was real C++ program, which is much more uh, generic and it handles any valid C++ expression, while GDB had its own evaluator. And then there is also performance where GDB on big modern C++ applications like LVM itself or OpenOffice, it can take up two minutes to print anything. And then there is also C++ API, which is also or API of uh, the debugger, which is missing in GDB. So let's look at the first motivation. Just to have the idea, you can see in GDB uh, when you here normally when you print expression it is completely internal to GDB. GDB will parse it and uh, then uh, even evaluate it internally. Uh, while now uh, there exists compile expression extension of GDB which works the same way as LDB so uh, it will send uh, create some stuff uh, C source code for uh, GCC in this case uh, and for c -like in this case and it will get compiled and evaluated and here you can have much more rich expressions. You can see here, this is uh, some real world examples, sure, simplified a lot. You have some uh, big cache in memory and you are interested only in this I element of uh, each of the entries. And uh, then there is some big index, which is only for acceleration of the program and you are not interested in the index uh, when you are debugging it. And you want to print really I, I of all the cache elements. This is std map and you would like to print only this I item of each of the cache elements. This is something from practice. And so in GDB one tries to print cache and you see here this is the item we want to see and then there is a lot of garbage we are not interested in and we cannot really read what is inside the cache. So, okay, there is some improvement. We can limit the uh, number of printed elements. So now you can see here zero, you can see here one, and these are the values we are interested in. But then we even don't see the whole, the whole cache because the whole cache uh, has 10 or more elements than 8. So we can write Python pretty printer in GDB and it really works and finally we see the content of the uh, of the cache that we see on each of the index and value and we have stripped the unusual the unimportant uh, acceleration cache in each of the elements but then the problem is that uh, if you want to just uh, print one debug expression, you probably are not going to write this Python program, which is even difficult for me to develop. Additionally, primarily, when you are a C++ developer, you don't have to be Python developer. Personally, I don't know Python much, and while, while I'm uh, developing always in C++, so when I'm debugging C++ program, I want to use uh, C++ code to debug it. So why should I be learning and using also Python? So then there are the possibilities in GDB. Uh, you see here is problem. These are all the problems I was trying in GDB some five years ago, and it still did not work. Uh, then okay, there, I have found finally one workaround how to print it. You can. Uh, uh, one of the problems is that uh, yeah, from debugger you can call only function which has been compiled in the program. <coughs> Some of the functions are being used only for debugging. So for example, if uh, it was not, if the program was not iterating through the whole container, uh, there was no begin function compiled in and then you cannot iterate it even during debugging because uh, 
just debugging has some different requirements. So sometimes you need to put there some just stop uh, dummy statement into the program to get more functions compiled, which are unused in the real program, but you can call them from the debugger, like the begin and uh, the operator arrow and uh, pre-increment and so on. And then you can really call it from GDB, but you see one has to type by hand all this. And uh, if there will be 100 elements, it, it's a bit tidy to be still typing those pluses there. So what else to do? So then you can use uh, LDB, and this is what I found some five years ago when I just tried that uh, LVM competition of uh, GDB and GCC, and uh, this is the real goal, what I find most pretty and most useful. Uh, in LDB you just type expression command and you can write any C++ statement which will get like just in time compiled and executed inside the debugged program. And uh, you see this is native without the... It has the same output as the, uh, as the Python pretty printer, but uh, you can use uh, C++ only and it's much more simple. When I tried to use the same as GDB, I was unsuccessful. You see these are my attempts. In fact, the compile project started those five years ago because when I found out that LDB behaves, behaves uh, much better in some cases, but up to now, after the five years, I still don't see it really usable. But uh, then there is a problem, you see. Additionally, even with LDB, we can call only functions which are compiled in the, infer in the debuggy. So even in this case, I need to add there some dumb statement to iterate the cache, because otherwise even LDB would fail on the missing statement. This should be, uh, this one, one of the possibilities is that uh, it could uh, use the original source code and recompile it when it already is using CLN compiler. It could recompile it again with uh, this uh, statement, but currently both LDB and GDB, when they are doing this just-in-time compilation, they take debug info as the source, the dwarf debug info. And uh, so they cannot really uh, compile their new functions. I was originally proposing to uh, take the source code and the standard system include files and compile it again with standard system include files, which could include some of the missing functions. Uh, but uh, it has some ABI problems because then you need so-called reproducible builds to have exactly the same source code while some system components can be updated in the meantime since compilation of the program. And uh, so currently it has this problem, but so far the solution should be so-called C++ 20 modules. If you know, there should be no uh, such uh, no longer source include files, but for example the whole vector from, include, from std vector from include files will get compiled into some intermediate uh, object file, binary object file, which can be loaded by LDB. So this problem of the missing uh, some methods and functions should be hopefully solved by C++ modules in near some year or two or when it gets implemented. So anyone sees the advantage of this, uh, of this expression? Did I explain it correctly? Do you find it great? I think I find it best since the sliced bread. Uh, I find it just amazing when debugging that one can really type anything you want. And, uh, uh, typically, uh, in the past, you had to implement uh, such new expression as new function of the program being debugged. And you called just the function to print the debug output. But that means that you have, for each debugging step, you have to recompile it, restart it. Sometimes you can no longer produce the problem, and so on. So this just in time is much more convenient. So another feature I was uh, saying that uh, it's great on LDB is performance. Because sometimes when debugging real world programs, I also have to wait, for example, six minutes for one print command from GDB, and then it will uh, grow up to 30 gigabytes in memory to expand all the debug info before it prints anything, while LDB has different approach, which has almost immediate output. So just to get the uh, idea, uh, there is so-called debug information entry. With, uh, who does not know Dwarf and debug info here? Is the concept of debug info clear for everyone here? Someone should I be explaining the back info? The 
the buck in for RPMs, the buck extension. So yes, uh, like each variable type and uh, even scope function, it has so-called die, the buck information entry. And then there is compilation unit, which is typically normally one object file when you compile C source files with its header files, and there can be thousands and tens thousands of the debug information entries because they are all variables of your program, but even all the used templates from the system include files by that one object file. So <coughs> this is the difference between debug information entry, which is really describing one C element, versus compilation unit, which describes the whole object file. And no, the difference is that uh, GDB was always reading in the whole compilation unit for the whole object file, while LLDB will only index it and then it will end expand and read in only uh, the back info from that one uh, element, which is the back information and like one variable. And uh, in the past, like in 90s when GDB was, it was fine because f first, plain C has very small compilation units, while C++ has gigantic compilation units because it's using templates and templates just are horribly big for the back info and uh, because they are various of their instantiations and they have many methods and they have many inline functions and just in practice they are gigantic you can see on L when you compile LBM as some arbitrary program which is even open office or so you can see that uh, just uh, just one compilation unit nowadays has about one megabytes of data of var, which is pretty highly compressed already because it's very optimized at var, but even despite that, it's one megabyte. And the natural GDB has some interdependencies between compilation units that when it needs, because when you ask for variable in a compilation unit, uh, it uh, needs to compile the whole compilation unit and then it will find some other elements which need other compilation units uh, because there is for example reference for some type which you are not interested in but it needs to really know everything about the whole compilation unit and then, then there are interdependencies so it will typically when I was measuring it about 50 compilation units expand so it is like 50 megabytes of uh, the back info it needs to okay uh, let's do uh, this one so I'm very excited about this event for the same in this case, I understand correctly whether most cases use LTC C++ or so-called CXX from the project. In this case, in this test, uh, it was both using SPDC++. But let's admit it that uh, C line plan has a bit uh, more simple or more poor debug info, which explains why it is smaller for C line. That's not a feature, that's a, that's a bug, not a feature that the, the bug info by C line is smaller. But uh, in this case, they are right there in this new CXX, uh, but uh, normally when you are using plant on Fedora, it is still using the SDG++ which comes from GCC. For example, I thought probably uh, I may use the CXX. You can also install the CXX with the on Fedora, it's provided it works, but just let's say that the test is not possible to make a record in this platform, so it's being used on. So just, uh, I wanted to explain that uh, what's the difference of the performance uh, that it can exp expand only one of the entries and not the whole compilation unit. Uh, but then there is uh, this uh, one, there's also this uh, disadvantage with LDB that uh, initially when you started for some program uh, it needs to index all the debug info and scan all the debug info to know where to find what and this is uh, advantage of currently GDB uh, where exists so called GDB index and so it will only mmap uh, the index from the debug info file and uh, then it automatically knows where is what so startup with index by GDB is 4 seconds but the problem is that during your com compile debug cycle, after each compilation, you need to create the index, which means that you already need again to read all the all the entries. So in fact, uh, it is pretty slow because if you compile program and then at index you are already on plus 70 seconds on LVM on practical 
on smaller programs, sure, it's less, but it still can take, for example, 10 seconds when I compile some my code, so it's still like to just for the debug side, it's like it's annoying for 10 seconds. And LDB should have uh, index in the future, but currently it does not. But the advantage is that LDB is uh, scanning the debug info in multi-threaded mode. So with, even with more cores, it's not so slow. Even uh, even without the index, it's not so bad. And so in practice, it's funny that even LDB, when it does not use index, then in practice, it's faster during the compilation, the uh, debug cycle, compilation edit debug cycle, because it's just 13 seconds to read it in. Uh, uh, LDB comes originally from Apple, and Apple does have uh, Apple index on OS X being used, but uh, currently on Linux for Barf, it just is not implemented yet. There is some already some support for debug names, but I could not get it work. It was written by Pavel Bat in Google, and uh, it just, I don't know. It did not work for me, but it is on the per compilation unit and not global, so it still needs to read index from each of the compilation units. And there are even, for example, 1000 compilation units in larger projects, so it needs to read 1000 indexes, so that's still slower than the global index of GDB. But this is true, it should be fixed uh, in, the, in some time. And then there is the third feature, such major one as. Uh, as uh, typically people always come to GDB and they ask, I want to use GDB as a library, not as a user. I want some program and I want, for example, to attach some other program and see its backtrace from my C program. So how will I do it? And people always tell them, use Python, because GDB has uh, Python extension, like programming in Python. LDB also has programming uh, in Python, API for Python. But just people want C++. Sometimes it's inconvenient when you have a C or C++ program to go Python from it. So this is what LDB provides for you. This is one of such examples how you can... It's similar to the Python, just that you can use it directly from C++. It has nice stable API. <coughs> so all these SB functions, everything which starts with SB is the public uh, API of, uh, of LDB. This is just from user point of view. Currently in Eclipse on Fedora, be careful that you have this RPM installed, uh, which has some big dependencies, so sometimes it's missing. But if you have this RPM installed, you can already use LLDB instead of GDB for, Ecl for Eclipse. And it works the same because LDB is also implementing the MI machine interface originally invented by GDB. So it's compatible for Eclipse. And in the Eclipse debug debugger console, you can access LLDB this way so you can see from eclipse you can see that it runs on ldb and from user point of view it works the same but it can be faster but i don't use eclipse myself so i don't have practical experience with it there are some blockers uh, if you know dwz uh, dwz is such compression uh, compression uh, being used in fedora and even rel 7 there is problem that ldb does not support it now and uh, so i wrote support for dwz uh, for LDB, but it's not yet upstream. So yeah, you cannot currently read with LDB the system, the back info, the system libraries. But sure, if you just compile your program, you can read everything in your program, but not. But sometimes you want to access even system libraries and uh, that's not available. But you can, on copper, there is my rock built with DWZ, which is also trunk. Then also it does not support the bug types, but that should be very quickly fixed. The the bug types are produced by the dash of the bug type section, which is somehow competing uh, with DWZ as the compression. Mm, it's different approach, but uh, but uh, so I would say that the world is more using this the bug type section while Red Hat is still sticking to DWZ. It has both some pros and cons. DWZ has said some slightly better compression ratio but uh, the compilation tape takes much more time like even hours and 10 hours on big programs so all has pros and cons there is even some compatibility problem mm, and these are some uh, some ni nice to have uh, features it is also missing many the back in for and build bot primarily it, uh, if you are used to commands of gdb then uh, 
the commands are a bit different in LDB. There is some quick hints on, you can Google out how are GD, GDB commands mapping for LDB, but LDB is primarily using by Apple X code, and so people don't type commands, so that isn't a problem for them, but when I'm using for command time commands, it's a problem. So I'm mostly at the end. Uh, anyone has any questions? Or? Does it support the protocol for removing by GDP? So you can connect to a machine and. Ah, yeah, you mean the GDP server? Okay, okay. Yeah, it's a question for you. Ah, okay. So the question is about the protocol GDP server. So, yes, uh, LDB is using the same protocol, and, uh, but it has its own server, and there are various extensions on both the GDP side and the LDB side of this protocol. So, Personally, I haven't tried to uh, exchange GDB server for LDB server, uh, but the protocol is basically the same. But there are most servers in most times for it. I haven't tried to fix it. For the basic, very basic functionality, it should work because of the whole uh, exchange. Any other question? Okay, and one. Uh, is LDB available for all architectures in the ground? Yes, it should be. I opened some toolbox for I think Power PC and S390, and uh, it works and it was built in the right so somehow we can make it. Yes, okay. it is. Uh, oh, I think a little bit my dad was implementing some support for S390 or so. It should be supported for all different architectures. But it's in the toolbox. Uh, so I can, any more questions? Anyone who wants to try LDB or is, do you find it more useful or I would love to be interested in some feedback or do you find it through, do you struggle with, uh, do you face some of the problems of GDB like <coughs> problem is the expressions and slowness of GDB or uh, nobody has this problem here? Okay. Yeah, okay. I think sometimes kind of the print one variable where you take three seconds kind of to print since the variable is to put a gate structure. Uh, uh, I think in front of this situation. Yeah. And people probably don't find it worse to write by the print you just go to the button. No, because I don't know, so I will have to learn and spend a kind of time. It's easier to work around and just have kind of right along this pressure and just print the field. So, uh, one question. So, the Python interface is different than GDP, I guess? Ah, yes, true. This is what I was uh, writing in this slide that. Uh, ah, okay. Uh, sorry. Uh, that whether Python interface of LDB is different from GDB Python interface. Yes, it is. Currently, the pretty printers or LDB calls it data formatters needs to be right completely again, differently, which means primarily like STGC++ pretty printers because then there are also pretty printers for GLIT, for example, for the GLIS, but and uh, some other like, yeah, maybe five libraries which have pretty printers, but I don't think those are much important. The very important ones are for like, STGC++ and they are already implemented by uh, yeah, I have a library of uh, Python scripts that I use for post-mortem uh, for order analysis. So again, I don't want to redo them again, but I can see the slowness of GDB, even with the Python scripts, it takes quite a long time to read the variable or get the, or some kind of a link structure. So yes, it's the part that it's um, the Python LDB is generated by the swing somehow. So it's directed from C++ uh, generated so that you can even use the C++ API, but yes, uh, it's in that compatible. There are some discussions about it, but not so much. So, so we are at the end. So, thank you. This is the pretty printers, just to see what it is about the pretty printers. So I would say, <coughs> So, thank you.